Uh, so it's not all silly. And um, I'm not sure if I have enough battery in my fan to last for this whole song. It feels weak. Do you ever find that when you pull out your pocket fan and you're going to play a song, you're not sure will it last through the whole song? I find this sometimes. But we're going to try it anyway. Um, this is a song called The Butterfly and the Entomologist. No idea. Kind of enough. I'm getting a really big. Bzz. It was there before. Ah, there it goes. It's mother superior. Is it mother superior? You know what? I think it's that. I got this new bigger power converter, and I think it makes more noise than the little power converter. You can take her, mute her for now. Sorry, mother superior. <laughs> We're, we're going to do another one without you, but I'll, I'll have you come back. Uh, don't worry, we'll get to you. So out on the road, I met this butterfly who had this fantastic wingspan that was almost two feet wide. And she'd recently been injured, so she could not fly. And she asked me if she could bum a ride. shell of her old chrysalis. She carried her things. She tossed it in the back and stretched those beautiful wings. She sat there next to me with her front legs on the dashboard. Those wings folded behind her and her little head cocked forward. She told me her story. A price was on her head. This bastard entomologist pursued her, alive or dead. He vowed to hunt her down and to claim a large reward. He'd captured her and drugged her and he'd nailed her to a board. Her escape was narrow. She'd torn through her own wing. She saw my look of horror and she started to sing I'm going to a no man's land because men and violence are intertwined I'm going to a no man's land because men and violence are intertwined said, but not all men are violent. I'm not a violent man myself. She laughed and said, try not to get too attached to me, because soon I will be well and I will fly away from thee. One afternoon when we stopped into this diner for a meal, she laughed and laughed about the plastic flowers on the tables. She watched the birds and tumbleweeds with fondness and with envy. I started seeing through her eyes the passing desert scenery. We came across some sad roadkill, a beautiful coyote. She sighed her butterfly sigh and once again sang softly. I'm going to a no man's land because men and violence are intertwined. I'm going to a no man's land because men and violence are intertwined. One morning I came out of this Texaco station and I saw that she wasn't at the car anymore so I figured she had run. But then I heard her high squeal 
and I heard his low laughter. You'll never outrun me, he said, you are the girl I'm after. I chased down their voices to the side of the station. She was cornered between a wall and a soda machine. I moved as if by instinct. I did it without thought. I clipped him and I kicked him and I grabbed him around the throat. I pinned him to the wall and his eyes were bulging wide. I said if there's a next time, I will see you crucified. And with this, I released him and he crumpled to the ground. The butterfly was gone again when I turned around. But then her little song drew our attention to the sky. Though with a certain lack of grace, she had begun to fly. That was the last I saw of her. She never waved goodbye. She just flapped off and disappeared while singing with a sigh. I'm going to a no man's land because men and violence are intertwined. I'm going to a no man's land because men and violence are intertwined. Thank you.